Did you know that statins can interfere with energy production in the mitochondria of cells throughout your entire body? Did your doctor mention that when they talked to you about statins? I'm going to discuss this major side effect and then go through the charts used to represent the benefit of taking statins because incredibly, it was these official benefit charts that regularly put my patients off taking statins well before we had discussed any of the side effects, though I suspect most patients are not shown them. The context of this video is statin use for primary prevention, which means using statins in people who have never had a stroke or heart attack or any other cardiovascular event before in an attempt to minimize those patients' future risk. This is likely to represent most people taking statins now, as opposed to those using them as treatment after having had a heart attack or stroke, which is a different scenario. Statins are HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors. They work by inhibiting the enzyme HMG-CoA reductase. This is the rate-controlling enzyme in the mevalonate pathway. This pathway leads to the creation of cholesterol. If you use a statin to interfere with this pathway, there is a decrease in liver cholesterol, which causes an upregulation in liver LDL receptors, and that increases the clearance of LDL from your bloodstream, decreasing your blood levels of LDL. But as well as LDL, you have just interfered with everything else to do with cholesterol, which your body is producing because it is vital throughout your organs. Cholesterol is in all cell membranes and impacts cell function and cell signaling and plays a key role in your immune system. Cholesterol insulates nerve cells and is vital to the function of your brain, the most cholesterol-rich organ in your body. The side effects of statins include memory problems and cognitive impairment. And your steroid hormones, including your sex hormones, are built from cholesterol. Statins can lower testosterone levels, and the vague term sexual dysfunction appears on the listed side effects. But it's not just cholesterol, because the mevalonate pathway that statins interfere with is also involved in producing coenzyme Q10. Every cell in your body, other than red blood cells, can produce coenzyme Q10, with some of the highest concentrations being in the heart. As well as being an important antioxidant that protects cell membranes, Coenzyme Q10 is a key cofactor for energy production in the mitochondria of your cells. By inhibiting the mevalonate pathway and therefore the production of coenzyme Q10, statins are interfering with energy production in cells throughout your entire body. That's a pretty significant thing to be interfering with and so no surprises, one of the most common side effects of statins is feeling tired or physically weak. Feeling tired or weak due to statins can sometimes have a slow onset, weeks or months after starting them, and therefore won't necessarily be thought to be linked to the statin in the mind of the patient. Feeling tired or weak can easily be dismissed by doctors as just, oh, one of those common things that everyone gets. But tiredness and weakness are terrible for your physical and mental health and should always be taken seriously. Another very common side effect is muscle pains. These could be caused by statins interfering with mitochondrial pathways within the muscle, or a reduction of cholesterol in the membranes of skeletal muscle cells, or a number of other proposed mechanisms. Again, sometimes these side effects will have an insidious onset and so are easily dismissed by doctors. But in reality, this is another very disturbing side effect because muscle aches will reduce your ability to do exercise, which is one of the most important things you can do for your cardiovascular health. And I do wonder how often symptoms like muscle aches, tiredness, and weakness are occurring at subclinical levels, just slightly hampering patients without them being obvious enough for anyone to address. Some years ago, I was in a role that involved lots of consultations with patients to discuss reducing their risk for future cardiovascular disease. A patient would attend my clinic having had routine blood tests, which included a cholesterol profile. And as well as lifestyle changes, these consultations required a discussion about statins. So this would be a fairly typical patient that I would see. A healthy 70-year-old man without any medical conditions, not on any medications, systolic blood pressure of 132, their total cholesterol divided by their level of HDL, the so-called good cholesterol, 
would give a total cholesterol to HDL ratio of perhaps three or lower. Their data would go into something called the Q-Risk Calculator, which is used in the UK to predict the risk of having a heart attack or stroke in the next 10 years. Of note is that this calculator uses the total cholesterol to HDL ratio to predict risk and not just levels of LDL. In this patient, their risk over the next 10 years is estimated at 15% and my computer would automatically represent that risk with a pictogram, a bit like this one, which I would show the patient. Out of 100 people identical to the patient with the same risk factors and biomarker values, 15 of them are predicted to have a heart attack or stroke in the next 10 years. In this healthy example, the risk is being driven largely by age. And I could then click a button and see what was predicted to happen if all 100 of these people with exactly the same risk now took a statin for the next 10 years. Because of course, you don't know who are the ones who are going to have the heart attack or stroke. And the computer using the official figures showed that five people would now not get a heart attack or stroke over the next 10 years due to the statin with the other 95 people taking statins appearing not to get benefit when represented in this way. You don't have to agree with their choice, but the patients I saw consistently chose not to take statins when I showed them these pictograms. They did not think it was worth taking a statin every day over the next 10 years for, and they usually cited concerns about possible side effects, even though I had not discussed side effects with them at this stage. And by the way, I did not know about the mevalonate pathway or the impact of statins on coenzyme Q10 at this time. Certainly not something I learned in medical school. But let's add in official figures for two possible side effects. One person out of these 100 put on statins is predicted to get type 2 diabetes due to their statin, another highly significant side effect. And according to these official figures, two of them are predicted to get muscle pains due to their statins. In reality, there is not agreement on the rate at which those taking statins actually get muscle pains caused by their statins, with ranges from 1% reported by some randomized controlled trials to more like 30% in some patient surveys. You might wonder how a randomized controlled trial gets a side effect rate that is 30 times less than when you ask patients in the real world. But that is a topic for a future video, I think. No official figures for other side effects such as cognitive impairment, weakness, fatigue, joint pains, headache, dizziness, nausea, digestive problems, pins and needles, sexual dysfunction, or liver disorders. But all 100 of these people will have essential biological functions in their bodies interfered with, impacting coenzyme Q10 production, cell energy generation, and cholesterol. If you keep the same healthy clinical picture but change this to a 70-year-old woman, you can see their predicted risk is lower at 10% over the next 10 years, and so the predicted benefit they could derive from statins is also slightly lower. Though there are many reports that suggest the rates of side effects in women can be significantly higher. You can use the QRISC3 calculator yourself and have a play around with different values. It's linked in the description, along with the source for official figures on the benefits of taking statins for various different QRISC scores. Remember that this is all in the context of primary prevention. The patients I was typically seeing were not representative of the general population. They tended to walk in looking slim, healthy, and younger than their age. They described healthy, active lifestyles with good nutrition, though beyond that, there wasn't anything exceptional to these patients. They simply took a keen interest in their health and were proactive with their lifestyle choices. If we look at a 70-year-old woman, but now with type 2 diabetes and on medication for high blood pressure, and despite being on blood pressure medication, still has raised blood pressure on her readings, which is a very common scenario, and with less HDL relative to total cholesterol, giving her a higher value for her ratio. Her Q-risk score comes out at 30%. Take 100 people in the same boat, and it's estimated that 30 of them will have a heart attack or stroke in the next 10 years. Get all 100 of them on statins consistently for the next 10 years, and now 11 out of those 30 
are no longer predicted to have any cardiovascular event thanks to statins. You've taken 11 people out of the red. However, if you were to actually tackle the root causes and use lifestyle medicine to optimize this patient's modifiable risk factors, reverse their type 2 diabetes, get them off their blood pressure medication, and normalize their biomarkers, you would have just taken 20 people rather than 11 people out of the red because the Q risk would be back down at 10%, like the previous example. But the big difference with using lifestyle measures rather than drugs is that you've now benefited all 100 of these patients in multiple aspects of their health and in multiple organ systems without any drug side effects and without negatively impacting biological pathways that impact energy production. Regardless of their cardiovascular risk, all 100 of these patients now feel better, look better, have reduced risk for other chronic conditions, have provided others around them with an inspiring example, won't need routine bloods to check their liver enzymes haven't become deranged due to statins, won't be exposed to side effects or any as yet unknown long-term effects, won't have to take a tablet every day for the rest of their lives, won't be going through all the extra plastic waste of blister packs, and won't be supporting Big Pharma. Even the ones who go on to have cardiovascular events are more likely to have a better recovery if they start at a healthier baseline. And onto a final example. Let's take a 50-year-old woman with type 2 diabetes, raised blood pressure readings despite being on blood pressure medication, and a raised total cholesterol to HDL ratio. Q risk calculation predicts a 10% risk of having a heart attack or stroke in the next 10 years, much lower than the last example simply because she is younger. And you could offer her a statin to take every day for the rest of her life and hope it didn't give her any side effects. But operating healthcare in this way is a great pity because she has preventable and reversible medical problems that can be solved with simple basic steps that will make her feel better. And if that happened and her diabetes was reversed, blood pressure normalized, and her cholesterol ratio got down to 2.5, then her risk would go down to 1.7% over the next 10 years. Now, if you just think that's unrealistic, never gonna happen, better just to use a statin. Well, firstly, that's a very boring, defeatist attitude, in my opinion. You're certainly not going to inspire anyone to change their lifestyle with that thinking. Secondly, please don't complain that governments don't give the health service enough money because there is no amount of money that will fix the current health crisis if we are not going to address the root causes. This is why statins are such a pet hate drug of mine. Lifestyle advice is given brief lip service for about a minute before the prescriptions are handed out like candy. They completely miss the root cause of the problem, the side effects are not discussed properly, and then often downplayed by healthcare professionals when they occur. And statins are routinely used in potentially inappropriate scenarios without anyone questioning them, such as in elderly patients with advanced dementia nearing the end of their life. Is a statin at that point really what the patient wanted? Has that been discussed carefully with their relatives? And in what way is it benefiting them? Statins also risk encouraging people to think that by taking a statin every day for the rest of their life, they are actively doing something to reduce their cardiovascular disease risk. And so maybe that means they don't have to focus so much on those difficult lifestyle changes. Difficult, of course, because the ones they have heard include things like calorie-restricted, low-fat diets that can make you feel low on energy. Whereas when people get some alternate nutrition and lifestyle advice that they can immediately feel boosting their energy and making them feel better, guess what? Lifestyle changes become a lot easier and a lot more rewarding than taking a statin every day for the rest of your life. Do let me know what you reckon in the comments. I'd be very interested to hear how the risks and benefits of statins were presented to you by your doctor. If you've had side effects with statins, have they been taken seriously? And do you think the people that I saw made the right call? I've linked some videos in the description that give a good starting point for lifestyle changes, and my book is also linked in the description for a fully detailed practical approach. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe, and I'll see you next time.